Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Tech Chit Chat Show, where we drink coffee and talk about tech. If you are new here, my name is Ken. You can find me on Northern Viking every day and Northern Viking Explorer on YouTube. I am here with my co-host, Stephen Loney on YouTube and 8-Bit Warrior on Twitter. We have a great show for you today. We are going to be chatting about all sorts of stuff, including cloud gaming on Chromebooks, Xbox, game streaming devices that may have leaked. We're going to talk about EU making the USB-C mandatory, roller coasters triggering iPhone crash detection, YouTube handles, and the Asus dial. So if you want to find any of that stuff, if you're watching on a later time or date when we're not live streaming, we'll put some timestamps in the description. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was a mouthful. How are you today, Stephen? Good morning, Ken. I'm doing well, thank you. Yes. Good, good. Did you have a good weekend? Of course I did. I spent it with you, didn't I? You did. It was a fun weekend. Yeah. We had... We, uh, to, we should have just live-streamed our whole weekend talking about tech. Yeah, because that would have been amazing, right? Yes. Well, we right. had... Up, up here in Canada, we had the Canadian Thanksgiving. So unlike mm -hmm. the Americans who have it later, we have ours. I think apparently it's the second Monday of every October. I don't know why. But uh, yeah, so yeah, Monday was weekend. our... That's my holiday. Wait, wait, cheers. We drank cheers. We drank lots of coffee. Who, who brought a coffee this morning? Who out there is drinking coffee? Welcome. Join the chat. I'm drinking coffee. It's coffee, not water. But you can have tea. You can have graham cracker, Pepsi, whatever you need. Graham cracker, Pepsi. <laughs> S'more Pepsi. So if this is your first time joining us, Stephen and I, um, over many, many years, have uh, talked about tech a lot. And we did this at coffee shops or around the house and um, when we'd be together. So now we live stream it with you and we want to, you to join us and talk about tech. We don't claim to know everything, but we know a little bit more than some people. So we like to talk Hopefully. about that. And we know a little bit less than other people. So um, we, uh, we definitely like to talk about that and share that with you. So um, if you're new here, grab a cup of coffee, join us and talk about tech and yeah. We might be wrong, we might be right, but um, we just like talking about tech and sharing it with you. So make sure if you are watching, um, join along in the comments and we like to include people in the stream and mm -hmm. what you have to say and your thoughts on the topic. So yeah. Um, ooh, Yoshi saying, well, we've already got some comments here. So this is awesome. Our good old Yoshi, I can't wait for the YouTube handles. He <laughs> he. Yeah. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the show. Cause I think I'm excited about that as well. It's going to be yeah. a nice little perk over on YouTube, taking down my sticky notes here. Cause they're kind of in the way of my screen. Um, anything else that you, uh, about the last weekend that came up, came to mind that was, was good for you? Oh, that was good. Good, uh, yeah. good turkey dinner. Good family time. Yeah, you guys and your family that came down, and uh, uh, it's been good. People may yeah. notice that um, my video may be a bit clearer today. I got a proper setup with a cam link and stuff today, so hopefully that comes through as sharper image for today on my end. So got that set up. That was nice. And uh, yeah, yeah, we had to go adapter shopping and get you an adapter for your cam link. So uh, yeah, we found a little budget adapter. Like, what's the what'll work for cheap? <laughs> work. So yeah. so. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it, there was three turkeys, which was a lot of turkeys for. And things. apparently, it wasn't it wasn't even enough. Apparently, so. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of people there. It was well, fun. when your son is like what six six, six feet yeah. six inches tall, you know, he ate three, three turkeys, turkeys by himself. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the weather was amazing. Like it's October and it's still um, in the twenties, which yeah. um, is around probably like low 70s so in fahrenheit that was some quick math i did in my head there hopefully it's wow. right but um yeah the weather was amazing i went we went down to the beach my wife and i and went for a walk down there and we're wearing shorts and t-shirts so yeah and that's canada so yeah crazy stuff in october although my furnace apologies if anyone hears my furnace in the background it is going this morning for some reason so it's like next door to me so if you hear my furnace it's all good yeah. Um, Yoshi actually brought up something, and I actually uh, kind of want to bring this up. I didn't even think about it because um, I knew this was happening. I believe it's, I want to say tomorrow and the next day, um, there's the prime days. 
Um, and there's already some prime deals out there, especially on some of the Amazon products. I was looking last night, um, some of the prime T or Amazon TVs and different fire sticks and things are popping up on sale. Um, so I think there's, if you want to get some early Christmas shopping done, um, this might be a good time to check out those deals. If you have prime, if you don't have prime, they usually have a free trial. Um, you can usually try that out for a month or so. So, um, I would check those out cause you might be able to get some of your Christmas shopping done early and then you can just relax at Christmas. Right. Yeah. I don't Do you buy that. anything on prime day? No, no, no. I typically, no, I don't have prime. I, yeah. It's been a long while since I got anything from Amazon, I think. So probably I, um, yeah, I buy quite a bit from Amazon. I believe it. This showed up yesterday. There are like wrist straps for cameras and phones. It's a pretty good deal. Six of them, like adjustable wrist straps, was six fifty. So um, yeah, just little things like that are easy to get. You could have saved a dollar sure. on Prime Day. Uh, yeah, I don't know if they'll be on sale on Prime Day, but who knows? <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's saying it's a trap. It's a, yeah, of capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. So, uh, well, let's dive into it. Our first topic, this is kind of a fun one. Um, cause we, it's funny cause last week we talked about Google Stadia going the way of the Dodo bird. Right. And then all of a sudden this news comes out from, um, Google interest introducing the world's first laptop built for cloud gaming. And these are Chromebook laptops that they've designed yeah. for cloud gaming, which was really an interesting thing. All of a sudden, um, this is popping up everywhere this morning. And I'm actually surprised I hadn't, it kind of hadn't been leaked that we already knew about it. I mean, it might've been leaked, but I didn't hear about it. Did you hear right. about it? No, um, no, no. I, 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 I kind of would have almost assumed that there already would have been like a streaming service for Chromebooks or something. Like I just I haven't been in touch with what is on the Chromebooks, so yeah, but it, it kind of makes sense. It does make sense. So um, introducing the world's first laptops built for cloud gaming. So they're working right now with Asus, Acer, and Lenovo for some streaming gaming Chromebooks, and um, they're also so I don't believe it's. Um, so let's start. Let's talk about the Chromebooks quickly, and then some of the features that you might get. So um, again, those three companies: Acer, Asus, and Lenovo. 120 yeah. hertz displays, for example. I saw. I think the Asus one might have been 100 and yeah, 144 hertz display. Yeah. So there's different laptops you can get with RGB, yes. anti-ghosting keyboards, Wi-Fi, six connectivity. Um, so it's pretty interesting that they brought this out. And they're pretty good looking as well. <laughs> they are. They are. I mean, people aren't going to go for Chromebooks for like gaming. It's not a gaming laptop. But but if you if it does fit your needs and that makes sense for you, it actually seems like a viable service to have on there on mm -hmm. top of on, like it just it seems to make it seems to make more sense than like Google Stadia, the direction of what Google Stadia was going. I was actually thinking originally that it was Google Stadia tech behind it. But as I was looking into it more, it seems that it's like they're incorporating the GeForce Now streaming, the um, Xbox X Live streaming. Xbox Cloud Gaming, yeah. that's in beta. And then yeah. GeForce Now and Amazon Luna. I wanted to say Luma, but Luna. Um, yeah. So some so of them are coming. Um, but yeah. some of them will be there and some are not available outside of the United States right away. So, um, but yeah, there's going to be access to more than 1500 PC and console games. Right. And I, I thought the Google Stadia thing was playing more of a role in like, like transitioning over, but I couldn't, mm. unless I missed something, I didn't see it. I didn't see that. So I don't know if they're still trying to move some of the stadia stuff over to repackage it and repurpose it but from from here it just looks like it's third party streaming services that they're supporting yeah the interesting thing is they've also announced um accessories with partners from Azu or sorry acer 
Corsair, HyperX, Lenovo, and SteelSeries. And I know we talked about this last week, the Stadia controller, maybe they could repurpose it for gaming. Maybe they could unlock it for a Chromebook. Chromebook. That, hey, that'd be a nice so, move. Yeah, so now, that would be... Uh, I was I was a little has, skeptical about like why they're having 120 hertz displays for these things. I, I'm not knowing. I thought 60 frames per second was the max for streaming, but apparently with GeForce Now, was it you can do like a 1600p 120 hertz streaming? So that's new to me. I didn't know that they were providing streaming at that that high of a mm -hmm. um, frame rate. So I guess it makes um, sense with 120 hertz displays. And it says the new cloud gaming Chromebooks come with a three month trial to Amazon Luna and NVIDIA GeForce Now RTX 3080 tier. tier. So, yeah. Uh, so, for those already in the GeForce Now ecosystem, it could be a really good fit. Yeah. I have to, I'm a little amused though, because they're pushing the specs. So, they have like this high quality gaming, streaming, and then they're pushing these pretty nice specs for like the hardware on the actual Chromebook itself. Well, but, let's jump. Should I jump over to the Asus? Sure. One? Yeah. So we had um, we have this over on the Asus website, and this is the Vive CX55 Flip, is what they're calling it. Um, but this one had the 144 hertz display, but the tech specs on this. So the processor, like the top processor, is an i7 1165G7. Yeah. Um, like that's no slouch, and I think the, I think the, I think the most are coming with eight gigs of RAM, which is fine for a Chromebook, and then some have sixteen gigs. But yeah. the the kind of the funny thing about pushing the, the on system specs here is it's not going to affect the actual. It's not going to affect much the streaming performance as long as it can handle a stream at the resolution and all that. It, it's a little mm -hmm. bit like okay, what are you going to use these specs for? Because it's the remote PC that's sending you a, a video feed. So, I mean, it's nice. It would be nice to have a, a, a decently specced machine, but. So I have one question about this, which are they going to unlock this for those who install Chrome on their own computers? Chrome OS. I imagine that they will, but not right away. Because I've got this little computer here. Yeah. Um, let me bring this up. So this laptop here, it's actually running my back. Whoa, I just broke it. Um, my background <laughs> there. We'll see if it comes back. Oh, I'm breaking things. Um, that's a gaming laptop that I currently have Chrome OS on, right. um, which custom. could more which could more than handle um, any streaming. of these. Yeah, games. Yeah. Not streaming, yeah. probably or not not necessarily on the highest settings, but I could probably play most games on it. Um, right. Is it going to be unlocked for that? So I think because they're working with like Lenovo and Asus and Acer, they probably want to give incentive for those companies to have first dibs of yeah. like, here's these laptops and maybe the first six months will be locked down. Yeah. That would be, and I think that would be healthy. Because someone who might be into that might actually go buy an actual gaming laptop. You probably wouldn't. And okay, so, so so let me let me back up here. The only reason I have Chrome OS installed on there is because I'm doing testing and videos and things. I'm going to be putting Windows back on that computer, so and yeah. putting Chrome OS on an older laptop. Um, right. So I, I'm not going to keep Chrome OS on my gaming laptop, but I'm just right. curious if people have older computers that maybe were gaming computers that they could um, put this on. Like age, aging ones, ones that are getting yeah. older that they could, yeah. yeah. Um, they could. I think it makes sense for them not to unlock it right away too because with limiting it to like these three models of laptops, it ensures a quality standard so it gets for gets good impressions. Mm -hmm. um, because if they unlock it to people who don't have good hardware and the latency could be because of the bad hardware, it could give a bad rep to the services. So, and it seems like Google has like worked with these companies to be like, here's the standard lower latency for like inputs and th things like that. So yeah, I think, I think they should lock it down for at least like three to six months. Yeah. Yeah. So Yoshi's brought up some things here. So GeForce is now essentially 
is expected to be better supported and hopefully streaming in 120 hertz. Um, essentially, yeah. I think, yeah. So we'll see what happens. Um, 120 hertz at 960, 900, what was it? What resolution was it they streaming at? 1600p? Uh, yeah, so up to 1600p. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So um, crazy. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Because at first I thought I mean, that was 16, 1600 by 900. I was thinking 900p, but okay. no, 1600p. So that's like 2K ish resolution. That's impressive. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's cool. Yeah. I think it's neat. And no, I feel like sure. this is, I think, I feel like this is more of a sellable thing than like Google Stadia. I think it's just a better, like for streaming services, it makes more sense to me. So, that all being said, was Google Stadia ahead of its time? No, because we've had on live. On live didn't succeed. We've had other streaming mm. services ten plus years ago that also didn't take. Yeah. Um, and I think this is where Sony has found its own success: is they have existing uh, system, and then they, they have their streaming services supplement. And I yeah. think streaming services work well as a supplement and not as your main uh, main course. So. so so then what about this? Because Xbox's Phil Spencer may have just teased Microsoft's streaming console. Ooh. Right. So all of the streaming news, this is just, just uh, what would you want to call it? Um, rumor mill? Rumor mill stuff. But we'll, we'll throw this up here. So in a... Um, picture that was released. They were um, tweeting about the 25th anniversary of Bethesda's Fallout franchise. And on the photo up on the shelf mm -hmm. next to the sword is what looks like to be a mini Xbox. Yeah. And um, there has been rumors of a mini streaming Xbox called the Keystone or codenamed Keystone being announced in the future. And they're wondering if that is it. So Phil Spencer is the head of um, everything Xbox, apparently. everything Xbox. Yeah. So <laughs> that's how they, that's what they call him in this article. So, so very interesting um, because they have talked about a streaming device coming. Right. And yeah, it coordinates very well with Stadia kind of leaving. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Thoughts on that? Yeah. So apparently, uh, might have been from this article. The writer was mentioning how uh, Phil Spencer has been known to like when it was the previous Xbox, maybe that was before it was released. He already he had it like actually in the background of like videos he was doing. Like, he, yeah, I think he purposely would for the Xbox Series it. S reveal. He had it. Yeah. In the back so of small. So it wouldn't be the Here's first time that he's just kind of tucked stuff in there probably for fun and kind of, cause he can, he's, you know, who, who's, who's going to tell him no. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it, it looks like it's the right size. It does look like a toy, but it, I would lean towards it being actually probably that. Yeah. Um, and it makes sense for Microsoft to do it. They already have the services in place. They already have streaming stuff mm -hmm. going. So why not? If they use it as a cheap alternative to their ecosystem, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Well, the funny part is last week when we were talking about the Stadia, I think I'd mentioned something, well, who could pull it off? And I think to actually have the streaming work and be like something big. And I, I think I said Xbox is the one I thought that could do it. Right. Um, just with the Xbox, like the way they work, their ecosystem with... Um, I can't remember what it's called. Their cloud, like their Xbox cloud, was that Xbox, right? um, where you can play it on your computer and on the oh, um, like the the service live pass, before. is that live like... passes and that stuff? Yeah, yeah. Um, they they seem to be the one that would be able to pull it off. Like if they could incorporate it with the Xbox yeah. on your computer and your console, um, pull yeah. it all together. Yeah, maybe be able to play games that you already own, but just streaming. Um, Especially if you're yeah. pushing like this isn't a thing for competitive shooters, but for pushing any games that are more single player based, the big epic games that don't rely on ultra low latency, this could be a really good fit for all that. Fall stuff. guys, 
<laughs> not Fall Guys. Not Fall Guys. You want to add more frustration? I don't want to. St- I don't want Fall Guys on the streaming service. Thank you. No. Okay. No. No, I don't. I struggle enough trying to play it on the Switch, and it bugs me at 30 FPS. That actually bugs me. I'm usually okay with low frame rate gaming, but Fall Guys is. It, no you know, it's funny about Fall Guys is I actually you're right because I'll go play it on the Switch and then I'll be like eh. And then I'll go turn that off and go play it on my computer. Oh, it's just, it gets fine on the Switch. Like, it's a good port overall. But when you know better and you just know that you can play better on the higher frame rate versions, you don't want to go back. Yeah. Not when it's so. competitive and you want the crown. <laughs> so, um, any final thoughts on all this streaming stuff, between either the um, Chromebook or from Microsoft? I think... I think where companies have a base product that's solid and have it supplemented with the streaming services, a good idea. I think trying to make the streaming services, the main course is the bad idea. I think you need to make it, make it a package. So that's where the Chromebook yeah. seems good with that yeah. idea. Um, yeah, no, I think solid. cause it's, it's not just gaming. You can use it for school work too. As long as they market it properly and not to hardcore competitive gamers, but to the right market for looking for rich experiences and more single player kind of. Yeah. So, no, I agree. I agree. So the next one is kind of interesting to me. Um, So the EU officially makes USB-C mandatory for smartphones. Yeah. In 2024. It's not far away. That's not far away. Uh, so goodbye. I don't even know what the Apple cord's called. Lightning. The lightning. Lightning. The lightning something. cord. Goodbye to the lightning cord. And something. I would imagine this will be the iPhone 15. Will probably when that gets, will probably be switching over. Yeah. Um. The other thing that was interesting this to this is, um. So this was approved by the European Parliament uh, that USB-C will be mandatory in all smartphones from 2024 and on. Um, But there's some interesting stuff about charging speeds and different things as well. Um, They're they're also making it mandatory for things like headphones, portable speakers, e-readers, keyboards, mice, GPS devices, and earbuds. so what was interesting to me is they also made some provisions in here for wireless charging. Right. Um, I think they're still working out the details on that, but they want there to be a combined wireless charging standard as well, from my understanding. Right. Um, just so someone doesn't do a loophole and say, okay, fine, we're not putting a USB-C on there. <laughs> and we're and doing we're, our, our, our own proprietary other kind of wireless. Yeah, thing. they're trying to get away from the proprietary terry items so right right Um, i guess this is a is this a way of like to create better user experience for consumers is this like an e-waste thing is it well the other thing they mentioned in here they're gonna make it i believe they said they are gonna make it mandatory and i think this was the eu that you can choose to buy your phone with or with uh, without a charger Oh, okay. So, um, because everybody's pulling the chargers out of their devices now, and you can choose to buy it, or you have to have the choice, apparently, to buy it with or without. So, um, interesting that way. I think you're right. I think it's e-waste. I think it's competition. Um, I don't know. Like, yeah. I, yeah. I honestly don't <laughs> like... I, I like that everything's USB C. Yeah. And you think about it, you shouldn't I mean, you shouldn't have to have five charge cables. It it is a waste. Right. You can just use one, right? As long as like I it seems like a good a good thing. The only thing is I hope there's still provision for companies that are actually doing something really different that where USB C just doesn't make sense. I hope there's no, still for, provision. for sure. Like if it doesn't work, they should yeah. have to be using it. Um, like if say you have a company that has like, they're trying to get their tech to the market and it's been like huge expensive. Now they got to rework their to a USB. Like 
Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's just certain cases where I hope there's provision, um, especially for things that are not mass produced, like yeah. not to enforce things too much. Um, yeah. Because there may be a time when a different technology is actually just more viable. Um, I hope it's not too strong handed um, yeah. in too many places. But I mean, overall, USB C is a good connector, it works well. So, yeah. So they're also saying that all devices that support fast charging will have to use the USB PD protocol, um, which for, um, I don't know how to explain it, but that's like the fast charging protocol. So, but people are wondering also, what about if it's like the next level, can you follow the PD protocol and then have something new or faster above that type of thing? So. Um, I think there'll be yeah. more information to come. Yeah. It's like, it's as long as it doesn't like stifle stuff, like you don't want things to stagnate. Like there actually is, imagine if you were like a tech company and you're creating this great new connector and it was amazing. Like mm-hmm. with this amazing connector, it's going to come to market. And now this law comes in and now it's like, you have to legislate yeah. now to get your actually good tech into stuff. Well, it would be like these, a company, them saying, oh, you, everybody has to go with Blu-ray or DVD. And then Blu-ray comes out and you're like, all right, <laughs> but it doesn't yeah. work. Imagine, like, imagine, if it, imagine if HD DVD was legislated. Yeah. That's the one. And then, yeah, it's like, no, you can only have HD DVD. We're not going to have multiple codec formats, yeah. video formats. Yeah. And everyone has so to there, use MPEG too. Yeah. <laughs> so there has to be some provision there, I'd imagine, yeah. for new, for mm-hmm. how technology changes. So do you think that this change in the EU is going to make Apple change its decision for everything or is North America still going to get like the lightning connector for like, Oh, I would assume that North America will get the USB-C, They're just gonna... which I think is good. Yeah. So especially in like, there's a lot of um, mixed households like yourself that have a lot of Apple devices and a lot of, Android devices. Yeah, I was just thinking, where are you going with that? What do you mean by mixed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. We yeah, we are a mixed house of uh, iPhones and Androids. So it's kind of I like you can't just grab half the time it's the wrong cable. Well, even my house, I've got one iPhone user and everybody else is Android, and it's kind of funny because did you double the rent? For yeah, a- double the <laughs> rent. <laughs> if you can afford an iPhone, you pay double. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. It just there's always the iPhone user who's looking for a cable. That's the funny part. Yeah, I, no, you're no not offense wrong. To the, no offense to the iPhone users. I just feel like it's always the iPhone user that's looking for a cable. <laughs> so I, that actually seems accurate. <laughs> so <laughs> and then there's me. I have like. This is three USB C cables just like right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a couple more down here. So okay, I'm a, I'm in the tech industry, but <laughs> so uh... yeah. Anyway, that is uh well it'd be interesting to see what happens with all of that down the road. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. For better so, and for worse. You know, I, I'm just gonna say this before I go to the next article iPhone, Apple makes great phones. They're just not for me. So agreed. So they're not there. Some people love them and that's great for them. They're just not for me. And I'm, I'm going to add to that. Apples are no longer the easier to use device. Mm-hmm. I'm techie. I've used computers all the time. I go to the iPhone to help my parents with it. And I don't understand what I'm doing with it. I now feel like the old person who doesn't understand technology when I use an iPhone, they have lost me. I don't get their system. It's not yeah. easy to use. So they've yeah. lost. Anyways, I'm going to add that. Leave it alone. If you like your Apple, enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just ordered the Pixel 7 you did. Pro. Yeah. So I won't be getting to Apple anytime soon. <laughs> um, so that's coming this week, hopefully. So, and it has USB C. Mm-hmm. All right. So before that, the only reason I said Apple makes good products, like they are good products. My mom uses one, it's easy for her to use. Yeah. And anyway, yeah. um, but. Roller coasters are apparently triggering emergency calls from the new iPhone 14. 
Ooh. Are we bashing on iPhone today? Was this intentional? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, we're not trying to bash on iPhone. That was, the, that was, that was not the intent here. <laughs> that's why I just said they make good products. <laughs> but they're just not for me. <laughs> So apparently this can has happened on pixels or pixels have crash detection as well before I get into this. But um, so roller coaster rides are triggering emergency calls from the new iPhone 14. Um, so at a US amusement park, um, they keep getting crash detection things and they're sending uh, emergency services there from the iPhone 14s and the Apple Watch Series 8. Right. So they have sensors in them that can detect the crash and um, automatically call emergency services. So apparently at the, where is it here? Um, I think it was in Nebraska or where was it? Ohio, um, Kings Island Amusement Park. There was six calls to local emergency services from the iPhone. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, this guy talks about how his new iPhone phone 14 flew off of his handlebars on his motorbike and he drove to the Apple store to get a, a new one <laughs> and, and his it family. sent out four. Yeah. It sent out 14 crash alerts to his family. I um, thought he was dead. I guess you thought he was dead or seriously injured. So, and at Dollywood, so Coaster 101 at Dollywood, it's a theme park, park partially owned by, uh, or I don't know, fully owned or partially owned by Dolly Parton. They have signs up that say, due to dynamic movement you will experience on this ride, Apple Watches and similar devices may activate their emergency call function. They should make it more like, it's so extreme, it activates emergency responses. Like they can use that towards their marketing for roller coasters. You yeah. Know? Make it like a, a Sega commercial from the 90s. It's too extreme yeah. for your parents. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Like, and you can <laughs> order the, before you go, you can order the chiropractic package to go with it and the massage. <laughs> I'm getting a flashback to like 90s Sega commercials and stuff. If there was like a roller coaster commercial, like Sega stuff, they would like the, the ride would finish and they'd be like skeletons and then they would like yell like Sega and then like, I mean, sounds like well, a Six Flags commercial. It's something. It just that's like more '90s, early 2000s, <laughs> and I kind of miss it. Kind of is miss that it. foreshadowing to our like last ne next topic? article? It is. I wasn't totally <laughs> meaning to go there, but like it does. Or two articles away, but it is kind of foreshadowing to it like, is the '90s stuff. So yeah, well, that'll come. We'll come back to that. <laughs> um, but this, so what do we, what do we do with it? Like, apparently the, the crash detection is pretty good. Um, I think there has been quite a bit of testing and it does work well when like, apparently in that article, it did list how there was a fatal accident where medical services were notified. It was legit. It did its job. No, it's a um, great feature for saving lives. It's just right. Not for detecting roller coasters. It does say, um, on the one thing to put your device in airplane mode before you go on the ride. So, right. Um, or maybe they just don't let your phone on roller coasters. So are know. we going to start to have a roller coaster mode for phones too? airplane mode, roller coaster mode? That'd be great. That would be cool. Yeah. You know? I'd be. Yeah. Anyway, it, it seems good. These, these automated things are going to have problems. It's like self-driving cars. Um, mm -hmm. It's a long while before they're going to be fully a thing. I was out driving the other day and there was like traffic, uh, construction. And was, I'm like, there's, I was barely understanding how to understand the traffic change yeah. and construction. I'm like, how would, how would a computer AI know what to do with this? Yeah. I can barely understand what's going on here. And I had to make a decision one way or another. And, yeah. uh, it's just, there's just as great as these things are, you can't always get every caveat. For sure, because here in uh, my town, um, at one of the intersections, they just redid it, and it used to have two left turning lanes, and they made it one, and the right. second one now goes straight through. Right. And I went through there a few times, and the amount of times I've been honked at and sworn at, and then I'm actually in the right, and then yeah, they're all, <laughs> I'm like, I'm going straight. That's where it goes now. <laughs> but people are like yelling and swearing, and then they realize they're wrong and screeching. Well, in the future, seconds. it'll be the AI that's angry with you. Yes. <laughs> Not just, people. but the problem is 
can a smart car <laughs> detect the the change that quickly in yeah. intersections? Yeah. I mean, and us humans, as much as we do make mistakes, we have a good ability to quickly on the fly make uh, mm -hmm. really advanced decisions with li limited information. Yoshi has a comment uh, saying, maybe the way to go is X may be experiencing danger. Please contact for help. So th the problem is, so in that fatal accident that was mentioned in the article, there may have been no one able to be contacted. Say it was a more remote accident where uh, it may have been a lone vehicle that crashed into a tree off the road. Someone fell asleep. Um, there's no one to contact. So in that sense, just sending somebody out to respond could have saved lives. So that's yeah. the tricky thing is like how much of a threshold do you preemptively respond and not respond? Because um, mm -hmm. if you back off too much, then it may lose its life-saving benefit. I believe on the iPhone, I could be wrong. I think this article talked about it, that it waits 20 seconds before it contacts emergency services so you can cancel it. Right. But that doesn't work very well if on the first drop on the roller coaster, when you detect it and you're like, have to pull out your phone to cancel yeah. the emergency And then you like services. lose your phone and you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think apparently like on roller coasters, there's all sorts of really weird stuff that they find underneath like false teeth and, and things like that. So I hope they're false teeth. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Real teeth. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, he's also, uh, Yoshi's also saying, or maybe use AI to record camera sent to the police if it's not a roller coaster. <laughs> so. Possibly that's if the phone isn't destroyed soon after, like that, that actually may be legit. Even, even like a few photos mm -hmm. from the last thing or the last, like, um, apparently from the roller coaster, uh, the article did mention, I think too, that they did have audio, um, of the background so they could hear the theme park in the background. Yeah. And, so, but they still need to double check on the emergency response. Medical mm -hmm. teams are still, they still like to double check and make sure it's, it's not a false um, emergency. Yeah, so oh, for sure, for sure. Well, let's dive into YouTube and we'll stop uh, the whole iPhone talk. <laughs> so YouTube is introducing something called handles and it could definitely help with imposter channels as well. So. Um, I'm definitely excited about this. Right. So handles, you've seen them in other places. It's that at symbol with your name after it. Yeah. And they're introducing this for um, YouTube. So you can use it in comments. You can use it. Um, it'll be used as part of the YouTube channel's web address, I believe. Um, and you can see here. So like the example, youtube.com slash at YouTube creators. Versus right now, for example, my channel is youtube.com slash C slash Northern Viking every day. Um, so it'll have that at symbol, symbol in there. A couple of things they've done. Um, it sounds like they're rolling this out to the bigger channels first so they can secure their names, ones who are active and bigger. And I believe it was sometime in November, everybody should have been given the option for this. The other thing is if you already have a channel name or a channel URL, I should say, um, they are holding that for you. So I don't know if that's how long that is, but for example, I have Northern Viking every day as a URL. I should have that held for me, which is good. Right. No, this makes sense. I, I kind of already thought this was a thing in a way. Yeah. For some reason. Um, I mean, isn't it like, they, they mentioned TikTok, like they're becoming like TikTok, but aren't they becoming like Twitter? Wasn't Twitter the one that started handles? Like, Well, Twitter's had this forever. Right. And I feel like Twitter's the one that made handles like a thing. Um, but Twitter, I, TikTok's the one that's in the news right now and that YouTube's going true. after with the shorts and everything. So I yeah. think that's, that's why, but you're right. Um, I mean, Instagram has handles or at symbols. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it, it, it's it makes sense to have it. Mm -hmm. Um, especially the big thing is if it does allow for getting rid of this imposter stuff. Because there's a guy I, I do follow on YouTube and has a very like safe, like wholesome channel, like a very trustable person. 
Yeah. And there is people apparently scamming using his identity and he really wants that dealt with because yeah, he's tired of that. I've seen yeah. innocent people um, because his, his audience are, are quite like maybe trusting and he, he just, he's, he's tired. Like he recently was like YouTube fix this on Twitter. And he's usually not, a, yeah. he's not like an angry person. Um, yeah. So if this allows him to be able to moderate his channel and keep people from being scammed, because he may yeah. have an older audience watching his stuff that are more older as well, and mm -hmm. who may be more prone and gullible to these things. Yeah. So there'll only be one handle for each name. Yeah. Whereas you can have multiple YouTube channels with the same name. Right. So right. Um, that's definitely going to help for sure, because you'll be able to see in the comments that it's that channel. I mean, I it is it is a big problem. The um, fake accounts. I had a pretty big YouTuber, what I thought was a pretty big YouTuber, follow me on Instagram the other day, and then I realized it was a spam account of that. Was it Jay Z Two Cents? <laughs> no, <laughs> and it wasn't Mr. Beast either. So, <laughs> but it, you, you definitely, um, it'll. I know that was Instagram, but this will definitely help on YouTube, making sure you have. Uh, not so much scamming or 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 fake accounts are we getting a handle what's our handle gonna be well i don't want to say oh. i don't want someone to steal it yoshi don't steal our handle if you steal our handle we're gonna do something <laughs> i think we should do like crazy cat one two three four or something it's completely unrelated <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> or what about Yoshi OST one two three? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I know this isn't with permission, with of course. Permission. <laughs> I know that was for something else, but <laughs> we have permission. <laughs> Let's take it. <laughs> he, he gave us permission to take it. So, <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, handles will be a good thing, and I'm excited about that coming. So. Yeah, and I'm glad that they're they're rolling it out in phases so that some of the bigger creators get it. Because it, it wouldn't be right for me if Mr. Beast didn't get Mr. Beast. Like that would not sit. Yeah, well. yeah, no, that makes sense. I just think we should have titled this different. I think we should called it "Love for Handles." I just love handles. Love for handles because I I love <laughs> this and I think it just would have been anyway. Yeah. We missed an opportunity. So. That's okay. It's okay. Next time. The Asus Dial. <laughs> this is retro feeling. Yeah. So um, I shared this with you this morning, and I and it was actually in one of my tabs, and I couldn't. I had this looping sound going, and I couldn't find where it was coming from. Yeah. And it was from this, but I had it in my Discord, so it kept looping. I couldn't. Um, I just I saw this, and I just wanted to throw this in there. I don't even know really what it is. But I let just me, love let me play this tweet because it's sure. really short. I love it. It's so cheesy. So, so for those of you listening on the podcast, um, it's a guy like opening up a safe and then it shows a dial on a laptop. Unlock the potential. Yeah, <laughs> unlock the potential. So it's um it's like unlocking a vault. So this is a new Asus laptop that's coming. Uh, I don't think we're going to spend a lot of time on this, but no. it's, I, I don't know if I showed you this, Stephen, but this is what it looks like. So oh. there's a little dial on the laptop. Right. Um, so it's a pro art studio laptop designed for cre creators. The cool thing is um, they're calling it a certified color accurate laptop. So if colors are important for you for um editing right um, this might be a way to go and it also um has that dial which they called an ultra precise fingertip control over your creative apps with groundbreaking new easy style so um you can get ultra fine controls Actually, which seems useful it seems cool this so this is targeted for productivity for mm -hmm. professional and I mean, I just, I only linked it to you just because of how cheesy I thought that ad was on Twitter. 
I just I just like the cheesiness of it. No, I know you did, but I actually found this and I was like, oh, that's actually could be useful for a lot of people. Um, for I don't know, I'd like to know more about what the dial does because I know there's like the, I think DaVinci Resolve, you can get the speed editor and stuff, which is a dial, I think. So would that allow you to like scrub through your timeline easier and stuff? Well, that's kind of what I'm wondering um, if you could use that, if you can, could you set it to scrub frame by frame? If you're editing video or um, can we can we use it to enhance photos to get criminals off the reflection of a street lamp? Can we do some CSI? Can we do some we can probably delete the criminal from the photo. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's not what you do as an investigator. <laughs> <laughs> you have it backwards. Enhance. Thanks, Yoshi. Yeah. You got Thank, it. Thanks to the new Pixel 7, you can delete the people right out of your photos. Yeah, remove the criminal activity uh, evidence. That's <laughs> yes, good. enhance the photos. Enhance. And, it, and erase evidence, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Con control X. <laughs> <laughs> the new laptop for criminals. Um, <laughs> Quickly erase the evidence. Yes. So yeah, that's the Asus Pro Art Studio Book Pro 16 OLED. So yeah, well, I meant with, to throw it in there as the a Asus joke, style. but you made it serious. You made it a legitimate article, <laughs> and well, well done. You're kind of selling me on it too. So yeah, uh, no, it's more. I thought the like another with uh, color accurate colors, which I know is important for a lot of designers and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. But we do have a question of the day. Question of the day. Question of the day. Before we go to the question of the day, Ken, what happens at 100 subscribers? Well, at 100 subscribers, we will be upgrading this stream from this blurry 720p that you're seeing right now to 1080p. You will be able to see all of our faces in high definition which we might need to put on some makeup before we come on this stream then. Yeah, but uh, yeah. yeah, we're going to upgrade. So 100 subscribers on YouTube. That's our plan to upgrade. Yeah. So hit that subscribe button and help us out. Question of the day. Oh, you want to yeah. say something? And if anybody wants to buy us a coffee, you can buy us a coffee. We'll put a post note of your name and say, John Mark purchased this coffee. Actually, I, today I have a, uh, I like this cup. I have an Aso Osaka cup from... Um, Japan, which is from Starbucks. Mm. I actually, cool. some, somewhere I went for, and I actually like like that. It was kind of a neat memory for me. So Osaka, Japan, anyone out there? Do you want to? Cheers. You went to a to a tech store there, did you not? I did a really big tech store, and it was floor after floor after floor after floor after floor of tech. And I was looking for the super like the Famicom, Super Famicom Mini. And I, after searching floor after floor after floor after floor after floor, I got to the top where they were sold and they were sold out. I had this little little plaque and actually had English on it. It was like sold out. I was like, <gasps> and I was sad. So yeah, that's my experience with. So and, when you say floor after floor, like how big was each floor? So, you know, like a Best Buy or Future Shop? Yeah. Stack it again and again and again and again, like seven floors of like best buy that's, future shop kind of space or near that like pretty substantial that's um, amazing maybe not as big or maybe as big per floor like but it was pretty intense we don't have that kind of stuff here so that's amazing that kind of was actually very i think amazing. yoshi's excited about that <laughs> <laughs> if you if you make it to japan dude the shot like it's it's not the same as the west there's things there we don't have here so yes it's like a seven story tech best stores. buys. Yeah. Yeah. So our question of the day, would you consider a gaming Chromebook? I'll let you answer first. You know what? More than ever, I'm leaning towards yes. So today I would not get one, but is it a consideration at least? It actually is a yes. Okay. And if not for me, a consideration for somebody else on so so yeah. for me i don't personally need it i would go with a full-fledged computer but i could see how it would be useful for some people uh okay just because i think 
Chromebooks are, especially where we live, they are used in the schools for, for stuff. So if it was a little bit more powerful that you might be able to play some games on it and level up your Chromebook. Other than the fact that I don't want it to be priced more than a gaming laptop. So mm -mm. I think the pricing needs Agreed. to come in. Agreed. If yeah. the pricing is reasonable, um, and that's where I wouldn't even advise going for the extreme 16 gigabyte models. Just go for the eight gig, more basic ones that are still beefy enough because that mm. isn't really going to change performance if you're streaming. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't see, I would just go for the more midline, um, a more affordable one. Yeah. So, so Yoshi says no, yeah. and he has enough laptops for streaming games. And I would agree. You're probably not the target audience. So, right. Um, uh, I think though that there is kind of this mid ground target audience that it might work for. Do you know that meme of where it's like, someone's like the the one where it's like, um, mom, can we get a gaming computer? We have a gaming computer at home. And then it's like this old like nineties PC that has like uh, SimCity on it. Um, it's it's kind of, I mean like they, they, you technically do have it at home. So for the kid who's saying to yeah. the mom, can I get a, he has to get a Chromebook for school, right? He can at yeah. least get something that like this is more gamer friendly for that kid. Yeah. Uh, he, yeah. he can have the educational Chromebook, but still have some gaming. Um, yeah. Because it passes under the radar for his parents that, you know. Yes. So anyway, yes. I think it's good. All, all those poor children out there who wanted a gaming laptop for Christmas who got a Chromebook. Yeah. Now you might be okay. <laughs> I mean, even as a kid, I remember growing up and like you'd get things and it's like, hey, we got a computer and it's like, but it's an old PC office computer. It doesn't run. <laughs> what do we do with this? Um, Napster. Yeah. <laughs> like, so anyway, for all the kids yes. out there that uh, may, may uh, be happy about that. Mm -hmm. But also, also for like, college students, university students who just need something practical for their daily needs. Yeah. also have, have an option. If they have a good connection at their dorm or something, it might be a good option for them to do. Yeah, no, for sure. And you can, you can hog all the bandwidth so your neighbors can't do their homework. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, let's wind it down there. Yeah. Uh, any other final thoughts? Final thoughts for today? Well, you know what? I'm looking forward to the rest of the week and, um, you know, looking forward to doing, continuing, doing more of these shows and seeing what's going. Yeah. I'm just excited for the future. What's going mm -hmm. just more than ever. Uh, yeah. How about yourself? Um, not really. I, well, I'm excited about, I enjoy doing these <laughs> shows with you yeah. on a weekly basis, but, um, it's got some stuff happening. Got to get done this week. So it'll be, uh, yeah. A good week. I'm excited about next week. I think there'll be some new stuff happening, so um, we can share that with you. Other than that, yeah, I don't know. Not a lot to say. So come join um, us. Yes, Tuesday mornings at uh, ten, usually ten fifteen Pacific Standard Time in the morning mm -hmm. on that's the yeah. West Coast. That's Los Angeles, Seattle kind of time. Um, yeah. Come join us on Tuesdays, and we'll, would enjoy having you guys join along, chat with us, bring a cup of coffee, and. Yeah. For sure. So awesome. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Again, remember to like and subscribe and you can also check us out on your favorite podcasting platform. Until next time, have a good week and take care. Bye-bye.